بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ذلك ومن يعذم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب ويبع أنز دي سمبلز of Allah respects the signs of Allah that is an indication of the piety of hearts. If you want to last, put Allah first. Adab, etiquettes. When a person really knows love, then love will teach one the etiquettes of love. So a person may have everything but without respect, they are nothing. You can have everything, but without respect, you are nothing. And whether it's a hierarchy, whether between father and son, peer, murid, subordinates, or between lovers as well, adab is the most, ingre most important ingredient. Sometimes people get uh, offended when they are disrespected. But when they disrespect everybody else, then it is fine. And worse than that is disrespecting Allah and His Rasul. That's the climax of disrespect. So this heart needs to be dedicated to Allah. And this Mubarak journey is a journey to conquer the heart. Outwardly you may be moving from place to place, but ultimately internally we need to move the darkness out of the heart. This movement, when you want to clean an area, you need movement. The vacuum cleaner needs movement. If it stagnates in one place, the entire place will not get clean. person has a nice beautiful garden, they see weeds are coming up, it's left for a while. They need to clean the entire garden. They cannot leave space for the weeds to grow. It will overpower the entire garden. Likewise, this heart needs to be cleansed completely. We move from this place to this place, from the Mataf to the Maqam Ibrahim to the Safa Marwa, Mina, Muzdalifa, Arafat. These areas are covering different aspects to cover the entire heart with the love of Allah. So when the Azmat of Allah, the greatness of Allah, and that's a general rule, the person who you respect, you have the greatness, you have the awe in your heart. Adab will come naturally. So a person doesn't need to. Yes, there are points of adab. For example, a student in front of the Ustad, what adab? As a student of Deen, what adab in front of the Baytullah, etc. Certain points. But the primary point of adab is to have the greatness of the beloved and effort will be made to conquer the heart from shaitan lamma rakiba nuh alayhi salam fi safina ra'a shaykhan when nuh alayhi salam boarded the ship he seen an elderly man lam ya'rif who he did not recognize this person وَقَالَ لَهُ نُوْهُ مَا أَدْخَلَكَ So Nuh alayhi salam addressed him, said, where did you come from? Who are you? So he gave a reply for us to remember till Qiyamah. دَخَلْتُ لِأُسِيبَ قُلُوبَ أَسْحَابِكَ I have entered to take control, to completely control to take power of the hearts of the inmates. Fatakun 
قلوبهم معي وبدانهم معك so their hearts will be with me and their bodies with you so even though a person may be in front of the Baytullah, even though they may be in front of the Rawda at Harm, but Shaitan has made effort to manipulate the situation, influence the heart, taken his expertise and skill and dedicated it completely to control this heart where he controls it like a switch. So very important is that a person's effort should start now while they are at home this niyat that I need to create, imbibe and inculcate the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This heart needs to be drowning, it needs to be engulfed in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when this heart is submerged, it is overwhelmed, it is overcome and consumed by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is a power, that is a force on its own. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Sahaba. So a person could be in front of the Baytullah, but his heart is somewhere else in front of Allah in Salah, but his heart is somewhere else. Allah praise the marketplaces of Sahaba, where He says, Rijalul la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bayun an dhikrillah. Men whom neither trade nor business divert them from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And different ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Don't let your properties, don't let your children, don't let your assets divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha nudiya lis salati min yawmil jumu'ah. When the call is proclaimed for Salah on Jumu'ah, then hasten, rush earnestly to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the world and its adornments, its attractions, its marketplaces should not distract one from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah who created them, sustained them, nourished them, favored them with bounty. So the priority has been given to this transient, this, this temporary abode, to the permanent abode and, and destiny. So uh, as Abdullah ibn Masood used to say once when he went to a marketplace and uh, he seen people leaving their possessions and he said, Ha'ulai min alladheena dhakar Allahu fi kitabihi. These are the people whom Allah is speaking about. When the adhan goes, immediately they drop everything. So, similar like food, when it is ready and a person is hungry, then priority to the food and then performing salah. So people quote this mas'ala and they say, no, we need to eat. Uh, and uh, then, then we'll get engaged in Salah. But look at the difference. Sahaba, what food did they eat? We've got 11 courses, 13 courses. We can't even count the course that we have in our food. Sahaba used to have kajur and water. That's normal. Maybe if in a month, once they had meat, it was a luxury. Yeah, in a week, if a day we don't have meat, there's something wrong. They in a month, if they had once meat, that was considered a luxury, Eid. And then also when they were faced with the situation, it would be a day, two days, three days, many days of hunger before they seen food. Yeah, we had breakfast, lunch, snacks upon snacks, brunch. 
intermittent meals upon meals and they would eat enough to survive enough to survive we've eaten to our bellies full continue eating and now isha comes and you say no 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 we need to eat first on the masla we're making amal on the sunnah so the difference is sahaba got over with eating even if food presented itself they got it over with and they peacefully calmly read the salah we nowadays get over with salah let's finish our salah then we can eat peacefully calmly so a person who is not connected to allah will not be connected to the places of allah sahaba made the masajid their homes the dunya was like a baitul khala just to go relieve yourself fulfill your need and come back home nobody stays in the lavatory fulfills his need and comes out as fast as possible sahaba were in the masjid they went to dunya fulfill his and came to the masjid na'udhu billah allah make us maaf dunya is our homes and the masjid is to fulfill our need go in quickly finish your salat and out up down kiss the ground back to town so uh a sahabi is in the masjid he leaves come back quickly sahaba what happened no i just had a camel i sold them back so they fulfill their needs their home was the masajid the baitullah the masajid how it is the house of allah if you house allah in your heart you'll want to be in the house of allah all the time So what are we housing in our hearts? That needs to be evaluated. See, the Muadhin is giving the Adhan, the command is from who? And who is he representing? A ambassador is representing somebody, some country. Ambassador of Allah, the Muadhin is the ambassador of Allah. He's calling to Allah, Hayya ala salah. And Hayya ala al-Falah is calling to success. The greatest need to which man requires in dunya and akhirah. But a person is deaf to the caller because he doesn't know who he is calling towards and who has given him instructions to call to. So we are deaf to the caller because our hearts are blind to the one who has been called to Allah Rabbul Alameen Sultan Mahmud called his officials to test their intelligence he took a pearl from his treasury and handed it to the chief minister so it was a very important pearl from the treasury valuable what is the value of this pearl how can it be sold he said the pearl is of great value maybe 200 mules laden with gold The king ordered him crush the pearl. He replied, "I cannot destroy such a valuable pearl. I have the welfare of your treasury at heart, and to crush this valuable gem would be tantamount to be adabi disrespect on my part." Imagine, here is the command of the king, but out of respect, he's saying this will be disrespectful. It is uh, against the etiquette. for me to be disrespectful so uh, then another minister was handed and uh, he said more valuable than half your kingdom may the pearl be protected he was commanded crush the pearl he replied my hand cannot move to destroy this valuable pearl it will be tent amount to enmity and uh, disrespect to your court to your honor it will be like defamation and disregard for me to do something like this so uh, i i i out of respect um forsake your command likewise the king after hearing this praised him profusely and rewarded him and like the 65 officials from the government were asked the value and then commanded to break the pearl after all the officials were tested the king turned to ayaz 
He said, all my officials have seen the pearl. You have heard what they've said. Now, what do you have to say? So he said, uh, Ayaz replied that whatever value I may mention to this pearl will be worth much more than that. So I cannot give you a value, but it is valuable. Quickly crush this pearl into pieces. So Ayaz immediately broke the pearl into pieces. And uh, he was not looking at any rewards as the other officials did. As soon as he broke the pearl, all the officials went into confusion. And the minister said that this is disbelief, this is ingratitude, this is the climax of, uh, of rejection. Uh, uh, he, is, he has foregone, he is, he is, he is, he is renounced. The, 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 the fate of our forefathers, the, 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 the value. So, uh, after all the ministers said what they had to say, then the king asked Ayaz, what do you have to say? He said, what is more valuable? The command of the king or the spurl? In your sight, the pearl is more valuable than the command of the king. I could not dismiss to remove my sight from the king and turn it towards the pearl is equivalent to shirk and ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the, the demand of the love and obedience to the king was that to obey his command. He said, uh, you decide what is more valuable, oh you un unworthy ones. The actual pearl was the king's command. So uh, when the ministers realized this, then they realized that they were in folly and they failed the test. That is a very important thing. And Allah uh, make us maaf, Allah praise the marketplaces of Sahaba. So their bazaars were like masajid. Our masajid are like bazaars, like marketplaces, like malls. So we are in the masjid, but our hearts are out. Mana Faruk Sab Maki used to explain, he said, when you come for salah, one is outwardly you are leaving your home, your business, your shop, your occupations. But when you say in takbir e taharima, everything else is haram. Your heart should also leave these things. Our hearts don't leave it. Somebody goes for Umrah, Hajj, the Baytullah. They've left home, they've left their family, they've left their businesses. But their hearts haven't left in Jamaat, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Khanka making dhikr, their bodies physically have left, but their hearts haven't left. So uh, we need to check where is this heart being focused to. And if we look at Sahaba in us, if you had to go to a house of a Sahabi, uh, where's your husband, he's in the masjid, when he's come back, I don't know, one week, one month, one year, maybe become shayid, I mean, we never see him. He's going to the shop, yes, he'll be back now at this time, yeah. Come to our houses, where's your husband in the masjid? He'll be back now, no, 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 five minutes, ten minutes. Where's your husband? He's going to the shop and he'll be like, hey, I don't know, he works overtime, this year end, he's doing this year, he's doing stock taking, I don't know when I'll see him. So where has the situation inverted? So we are in a darkness, we don't really know how much darkness we are in. We presume, I'm, I'm a Musalli, I'm a Haji, I'm a Abid. That's, that's our perception. But to how far we are from the reality. So Adab is such an important thing. The azmat of where am I going to? Who's calling me? Whose house am I going to? There was a investigator and his assistant, his student, and uh, he was training him. So they went camping. So after a good meal, they lay down to sleep. So a few hours later, the Ustad woke up his student and nudged him. And he said, look at the sky and tell me, what do you see? So uh, the student, being a brilliant student and a special student of the Ustad, gave the answer. He said, firstly, I see millions and millions of stars. And what does it tell you? The Ustad said. Well, he thought and then said, 
astronomically it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. Astrologically, I observed that uh, Saturn, and this is the location, and these are the uh, planets. Uh, originally, I used that the time is approximately 225. Theologically, I can see that God is all powerful and that we are small, we are insignificant, we are nothing. Meteorologically, I believe we will have a glorious day tomorrow. It will be a beneficial day. Yeah, so sudden and what, uh, what to do you deduce? What does it tell you? He said, you imbecile, you fool. Some thief has stolen our tent. Some thief has stolen our tent. So sometimes it seems like we got it under control. We gave a powerful answer. We did a powerful hajj. Where it is and where we are, it's two different ball games. Shaitan has stolen our akhirat and we're busy counting how much dunya we made, how much shopping we did and how much of the world we have acquired and what financial portfolio we have procured. As Malik bin Dinar once on his safar for Hajj says, I met a youngster who was walking on foot and he had no conveyance, no provisions, no water. I greeted him and asked, where are you from? He said, I come from him, mean Allah. I come from him. He said, we are going, ilallah, ilayhi. I go to him. So then I asked, where are your provisions for the journey? He said, it is under his guarantee, under Allah's guarantee. He said, this is a very long, arduous journey and you need food, you need water. Must be having something, he said, when I started this journey, I took five letters as food for the journey. What are those five letters? He said, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Sod. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Kaf stands for Kafi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, alayhi sallahu, bi kafin abdahu, sufficient. He is the sustainer, he is the maintainer, he is the provider. Allah is Kafi for me. Ha ah means Hadi, Allah will guide me. Ya stands for Mu'ayyidi. He is the one who will assess me and grant me refu refuge. Yadi, Yadullah, the hand of Allah is with me. Ain stands for Alim, he is all knowing. He knows what's best for me and he will guide me towards that. And Saad is for Sadiq means Allah is truthful, He will fulfill His promise. So a person who has a companion who is Kafi, who is Hadi, who is a refuge, who is Alim, who is Sadiq, what provisions will be needed? So Malik says, you didn't just speak. I said, uh, let me give him a hadja. So I gave him my shirt, he refused. He said, oh my elder, it is better to remain unclothed to acquire the worldly shirts. What, what, what clothing are you after? All halal possessions, one will have to account for. So you want me to acquire worldly shirts, worldly possessions, but in halal you'll be accountable and in haram there is adab, there is punishment. So he said and that person continued in the evening came, he lifted his face to the heavens making dua. He said, oh Allah, the one who is pleased with the obedience of his servants and the one who does not diminish in any rank at the guna, at the sins of others. Ya Allah, grant me that which makes you pleased. Grant me such obedience that you will be pleased and forgive me, which will be harmful, which has caused nuksan, harm in my relationship to you, meaning sin. He said then uh, the, the Hajj is put on ihram, and when they were saying the Labbaik, he remained silent. I said, why do you not recite the Talbiya? He said, I fear, they may say Labbaik and the word from the unseen will be La Labbaik wa La Sadaik. 
your cry has not been heard and we do not turn to you in pleasure we do not accept your words then he disappeared I did not see him for a while then I seen him again in Mina saying some Ash'ar in poetry should the beloved desire that I shed my blood he may shed it inside the haram as well as outside it wherever you want to take me Allah take it by Allah should my soul even realize whom it is connected to then instead of on my feet on my face I shall gladly stand in your presence and blame me not for this love O Allah for you know the thing I see surely will you my, 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 my conversing with you so he said a few poetry and then he made dua O Allah people have brought their animals for sacrifice I have nothing except my life which I offer at your door Ya Allah accept my sacrifice and there was a shriek and a cry and he passed away his ruh left him Malik said I heard a voice from the unseen this is Allah's friend and the shaheed of Allah so I performed his ghusl I put his kafa and we buried him and I was restless at night when I fell asleep I seen him in a dream I said what did Allah do to you he said I've gained the reward like that of the shuhada maybe even better I said I can understand you shaheed but why more than a shaheed he said they died at the swinging of the swords of the kuffar and the infidels while well, I died by the sword of Allah's love I died by the sword of Allah's love may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal and understanding wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen